So I'm here in Phoenix, Arizona, ready to help a family, a very large family, who need my help. Let's take a look. Hi, Hi we're, we're the, the Millers, Millers from Phoenix, Arizona. Arizona. I'm Michelle. And I'm David. And we have six kids. Their names are Kesley, she's 13, Kendall's 12, Marin's 10, Landon's 7, Ainsley's 5, and Avery is 3. Six. Six kids. <gasps> Did you draw on the wall, Avery? I'm a telecommunications specialist. I work a lot of hours. Probably anywhere between 60 to 80 a week. So it makes it really hard, because I'm pretty much trying to run a household like a single parent. Avery threw the ice cream in the tub in the bag. Oh, look at this behavior. I wanted six kids, but I came from a small family, so I don't really have any idea what to do. I just feel overwhelmed most of the time. I don't think so. Growing up, I didn't have a lot. Because of that, I've kind of overdone it. My word, there's clothes everywhere. I've wanted to give my kids everything that I didn't have. I am a pushover because of that, because I want them to be happy. You're a big pushover. You need to calm down. It's bedtime. Ah! You're supposed to be getting quiet time and calm down for bed. You guys, we have to calm down. It's time to calm down. Oh, I mean, nothing much is happening here, is it? Who's stepping up? This is bull crap. You and I are going to have it out here in about five seconds. You were trying to give me crap. I've gone from one extreme to the next. A lot of times, I'll be way too overly excessive with the kids because half the time when I come home tired, the kids are kind of out of control and running the show. Give me your phone. You yes, you phone. did. Yeah, you're you're acting like a dork right now. Please, give me, give me your phone. I don't like that I've, I've turned into this jerk. Stop. Yeah. You know what, give me your phone. Give me your wrong. phone. I don't feel like the kids really respect each other. Let alone us. I hid the phone from her and she found it. Get off of me, lady. You know what, stop arguing with me. I'm your mom. Oh, everyone's fed up here, aren't they? I mean, let's face it. I'm on the brink of letting them just do whatever giving they want. Up. Giving up. This is the critical time because you're kind of getting to the point of no return as the kids start moving into teenage years. Into teenage years. If this doesn't work. Super Nanny, we need, need your help. help. Oh dear, we've got some work to do, right? Dad, keep a lid on that temper. And Mum, get ready, because we're about to do some work. I'll see you both soon. Hello. Hi, Joe. Hi, pleased to meet you. Family. How you are too. you? Can I come in? When Joe first arrived, of course, I was a little intimidated. She's very knowledgeable, very professional. This is Avery. <laughs> Hi, uh, pleased to meet you. I'm Kendall. Hello. Hi, Kendall. Joe, you're all right. Kesley. Hi, Kesley, pleased to meet you. When I first walked in to meet the Miller family, I was received by a huge clan. And then very quickly, they went off, and I saw what it was like raising six kids day in and day out. <laughs> Hey, Let's try a sippy and see what happens. The first thing that I noticed was Avery asking for a bottle. And Mum didn't stick to her guns at all. One sip and then we'll, we'll, we'll give you the bottle. Here, take it. Come on. If I give you the bottle right now, will you try this later? I'll give you a bottle if you try this later. I'm trying it later. You, you're going to try it later. OK. When Mum gave in to Avery, I thought, what a pushover. And our kids know it. Mum and Dad had their hands full, so I decided to look around the house. We've got sodden diapers there. And I realised they're not organised at all. You walk through every room, there's just clothes everywhere, over every piece of furniture. Seriously, it might as well be coming out of the walls. This is the game room. Game room? Looks more like a laundry room at the moment, Ainsley. There's no system in place at all. You can't have this many kids and not have a system in place. What's this? That used to be one of our chore charts. We had different chores that they had to do and whatever. From what I gather, this family have tried a whole heap of charts and none of them have worked. I mean, come on. Really, we're looking at two parents that haven't worked, right? If mum and dad were having a problem with sticking to a chore chart, then what hope did they have with following through with discipline? That's my homework book. She was
who's working on it first, honey? I think you need to give it back. You know what? If you're going to treat it nice. Yeah, but you, Landon. It's my homework. Landon, you're not the dad or the mother. Mum was letting the kids run riot. I mean, she had no control whatsoever. I'm not going to fight you for the page. Ainsley, this is Landon's room. Why don't we ask if he can come in his room first? You don't need to wrestle her down, Landon. Okay, mommy will take care of it. Landon, stop being the dad. Or... Here, I'll close my door. I'll close my door. Mom's telling Landon not to be the dad and that she can take care of it, but quite clearly she's shown the kids that she doesn't take care of things. What is so hard with you loading the dishwasher? Since Mum does nothing when it comes to discipline, it always ends up in Dad's lap. And sometimes he goes overboard. Go over there and at least start it. Go at least start it. Go sit down and try. The kids get on my nerves pretty quickly. Go look at your bed. Why are your clothes on your bed? I asked you to put them away. You get to a point of exasperation where you just, you want your kids to listen to you. Come on. I need you to come upstairs, and they don't, and you tell them again, and they don't, and again, and again. What do you mean you don't care? Are you going to talk to me like that? <laughs> We're done. We're done. Then there are moments when you can let it get to you. Do you think this is funny? Kesley, lately with the teenage thing going on. What's the teenage oh. thing? Major thing is the texting, right. because it's all the time. I had quite a frank conversation with mum later on in the day about Kesley. I don't think it's the fact that her daughter texts. I think she's worried who she's texting. She's so sidetracked with it. She's so boy crazy. She's texting three boys at one time that like her. But sometimes I worry, like, with the boy stuff. What well, is it you're, what you're actually really worried about with this boy thing? Well, I'm afraid of them... Getting in with the getting boys. Getting in trouble. Going over the edge. Going over the edge, yeah. Clearly, Mum and Dad have got a problem with giving Kesley some freedom. And I wanted to see what she thought about it. What are the things that you would like to do? I never get to hang out with my friends, like, ever. And have they specified reasons why? Mm -mm, not really. Have you broke their trust? I don't know. I haven't done anything that I know of. Right. Have you earned their trust? Mm-hmm. Uh, in what ways? I don't know. I'm a straight A student, and I just am always helping out. When her mom and dad go on a trip, she'll have to babysit. My mom went to Hawaii, and my dad was at work one whole week, and I had to stay home and watch. And babysit. And babysit. So she went on holiday and she left for you with all the kids mm -hmm. to look after during the day? My dad will be here during the day, but then right when I get home from school, he'll leave to go to work. And then I'll just have to babysit everyone until the next morning. So you have them overnight? Mm -hmm. I'm quite dumbfounded that this young teenager has been given the responsibility to look after her younger siblings overnight, yet this is the same young girl who can't go to the movies and be dropped off at 4 o'clock in the afternoon. Tell everyone it's time to eat. Girls, can you go put this? Can you go get everybody and tell them it's time for dinner? Landon, come here and stop walking in circles. Help me pick what you want. You guys, come on. When dinner's going to be served, the kids gather together for prayers. Who's going to say prayer? It's Marin's turn. You said it yesterday. And then it's mayhem. It's been oh up my in the gosh, room we for are not going to fight over who's going to say the prayer. Landon, stop getting physical, and he just pinched her, David. Wait, this is kind of overload right now. Can you hold on just a second? Landon. Landon, let go. Landon, you're being a little brat right now. Let's go. I got a butterfly, Daddy. No, mm -mm. the deal is after dinner. Mm-hmm. No coloring until you're done with your dinner. Come on. No, stop. Sit down and eat your dinner. What's Michelle doing? She was printing off some stuff for them to color. They want the kids to sit down and have dinner, and yet Mom's on the computer making all of these printouts for the kids to color in, and Dad's banging his head on a brick wall to try and get the kids to sit down and eat. I'm a little bit confused here. How does it work, you doing the pictures and trying to get them at the table to sit down and eat before doing the coloring? I guess I wasn't thinking. Ainsley was done eating, and so we came no, in No, Ainsley's there, still then... eating. So, see, I didn't know that. And Lana just ended up following in, and so that's what's going on. I usually, yeah, so it's just crazy. I guess it didn't work out. If Mum is to remain on task, 
then she needs to stop being sidetracked by her kids and focus more. Can I say goodbye to you all as a family um, and just say I look forward to having a family meeting with the pair of you so that we can knuckle down and uh, talk about what we need to do, yeah? Okay. All right, kids, I'll see you all tomorrow. <laughs> I get the feeling that my wife and I are going to be crucified tomorrow. Both these parents are going to really need to step up because up until now, I've just had excuses and uh, I'm not accepting excuses. So let's talk about discipline. I'll say that again, discipline. OK, where is it? We don't really have, you know, we both decided. One minute's one thing, and the next it's something other. Right. The pair of you together have not established what's appropriate discipline for our 13-year-old, what's appropriate discipline for our toddlers and those in between. You haven't discussed that together. Not really. We haven't so, discussed much of anything. When, now that I'm listening to you. I mean, what happened? The two of you met, you decided you were going to marry and have six kids, and then you stopped talking. Like, what happened? It's crazy. So who gives the warnings in the house? Well, it depends. If you call her warning, I'm going to call Dad. You know, that's, that's about it. If you're prepared to be somebody who's going to pass the buck on to Dad, then you're basically saying that what you have to say and your empty threats ain't worth nothing. And then guess who becomes bad cop? And is that fair? It's not fair. And then that puts you in a situation where you lose your call, and then you start to shout and yell, and then the kids only respond to when you shout and you yell. Yeah, just a big ogre. Let's talk about Kesley. I heard you both say, well, we trust Kesley, but your actions don't show that you really trust her. How is it OK for your 13-year-old to look after her younger siblings overnight while you're working night shift and you're off in another state? How is that OK? Yet to drop her off at a movie at 3 in the afternoon with a couple of friends and then pick her up is not acceptable. When you show Kesley that you don't trust her, what do you think it does for her? It decreases her self-esteem. Correct. Makes sense. You hold them so tight, you love them, you end up losing them because they fight to get away. The looser the hand, the tighter the grip. Right. Let's talk about house chores. These kids have got so much leeway between the pair of you. Why would they do it? Why would they do it when good old mum will just clean it all up, take care of it, and eventually get it done? Why? They don't have to. No, you're right. But you're teaching them to be lazy. You've got a big enough family where you can put you know, systems in place where you, more hands, the merrier. Yeah. You've got to change the way you think, your mindset and your actions that follow. And I can help you do that, but how badly do you want it? It's my number one priority right now. Yourself, David? More than anything. OK. So I'm not going to sit here and tell you that it's going to be easy, because it's not. It's going to be challenging. But you know what you're going to do? You're going to push through it together. Thank you very much. Thank you. It certainly is important for these kids to be taking on responsibilities in the house and all mucking in to do their bit. So I'm going to present them with a chore buddy system. There are chores here that I think realistically, Kendall, Langdon, Kesley and Merrin, you're more than capable of being able to do. I concentrated on the four oldest children because Avery's three years old, so a little bit too young, and Ainsley's five years old, so she can help out every now and then. You have been divided into two teams. The purple team is Kendall and Langdon. Let's hear it for the purple team. All right. And Kesley and Marin are the green team. Let's hear it for the green team. You're going to be wearing the bracelet with your colours. Catch. Mum and Dad are going to place this board up so that everybody can see it. All right, guys, so team purple and green, take a look at your board, have a look at what you've got, and let's get busy. Initially, both teams were really fired up about doing chores, and then Landon started to lose heart. 
Are you going to help? What I want is a new chore buddy because I see my sister Mary and Kelsey work together. They get the job done really quick, unlike me. You're on a team, Landon. Get off the horse and fold clothes. I had to be stuck clothes. with Dad. I had to be stuck I with him. I be with her. See? I had to be stuck with him. He's not even going to do any work if he was stuck with someone else. Landon, get off the horse. What? You know what? I'll tell you why. Because you're going to get in trouble. No, I'm not. Landon. Get over here. Landon, I'm not even playing this game with you right now. It's This is your chore time. Something rather than dumb clones. Landon, you know what? This is what was. They gotta have a different job. I felt that Dad wouldn't know how to speak to Landon appropriately and would make things worse. So I stepped up to show Dad how to handle Landon in this situation. Everybody's got their responsibilities. Dad's got a list of things he needs to do. Mum has a list of things that she needs to do every day. Don't dig your heels in and refuse to do it. Let's get it done so that the two of you can get a lot of work done here. This is about all of us doing things together. And if you don't choose to do the chores together with Kendall, then you're actually going to be losing out on doing things that the rest of the family are going to be doing. Sure enough, the calm, rational approach to Landon worked. And he was very motivated when he realised that he may lose a few privileges along the way. Everyone benefits from working as a team and doing their chores. Not only is it helping me because I don't have to do it and I don't have to fight with them to do it, but it gives them all a sense of accomplishment. It was a total stress off my back. One reason Dad blows his top a lot is because Mum never does discipline, and then Dad always feels like the bad cop. So I wanted to show them both how to do a timeout properly. Okay, and explain again for a second time why they're now in timeout. It wasn't long before Landon put Mum to the test, but she was far too patient with all his shenanigans. You're not going to listen to me. I'm giving you a warning right now with your outburst about this. Off the counter. Landon. Now I'm giving you a warning if you don't get off Landon, the counter. This Landon, do not scream. She didn't really want to put Landon into timeout. I really had to force this issue for her to recognize the importance of following through with Landon. When he does things that you blatantly know are being disrespectful, how many excuses can you give him before you decide, right, I'm going to give him a timeout? OK. You need to go in timeout right now. Explain why. Explain why. You're in timeout because you've been misbehaving, I've given you your warning, and now it's time for you to be in timeout. Landon gave her a run for her money because he kept getting up from that timeout. The timer doesn't start until you mom, are in you're, timeout. Your mum, you're talking too much. It was horrible for me. I felt like it was never ending, and he was playing games with me. <laughs> I felt like just saying the heck with it. I can't do this. I tried so hard not to cry, and even right now, it was tough. Wait until he goes out, ignore him. Don't have to act upon it. It's not cat and mouse. So she's like, let him sit there. He's in a spot where he's going to play cat and mouse with you forever. So I went and sat down, gave a few minutes. And then he came over the table and sat by me, like he wanted me to get up and chase him, and I didn't. There's only one person who's in control and charge here, and that's you. And he needs to know that. So it means you need to feel it. Very firmly walk over to him, and you're going to say to him, you need to be in timeout right now. If you do not listen to me, trust me, you will be going to bed early tonight. And you gotta mean what you're saying. Landon, you are going to go into timeout right now. But tonight, you're gonna go to bed very, very early. Landon was still being very resistant, but in the end, he went back to that timeout spot and he did his time. I was amazed. I didn't think he was gonna do it. I honestly didn't think he was gonna do it. In the end, the timeout got done, but Mum's still a little bit ropey when it comes to handling the technique. There's still more work to be done. With Mum now learning how to be more firm, I wanted to teach Dad how to be a lot softer in his approach with the children. However, Kendall did something that pushed Dad over the edge. Uh, so what? Hey! Sorry. It's live, she said no! You know what? Give me the damn ball. Go to your room. Go to your room. You don't do stuff like that. That was really stupid. This is freaking ridiculous. 
I followed Dad upstairs and I was shocked at how he handled this situation. Now, what was that all about? And you totally smash her in the face with a ball and make her hit her head. Sit down! Now, that was just a crappy thing to do. Why would you hit your sister like that? Why? I don't know, because she Why would lied? you? Of course, Lamp pulls my hair for no reason. You don't care. You guys are sitting there fighting. I pulled you both apart. You didn't bring him up to his room. He did it for no reason. You know what? You have to admit what you did was worse. And you hurt your sister. There was no apology, no nothing. You did it like you didn't even care. Lance said not sorry either. We will deal with that, and we will deal with him. And right now, I'm dealing with you. I don't like this smart-ass attitude. And then Kendall started to become very emotional because Dad was coming down so hard on her. I think you need to apologize to Marin. I'll give you five minutes, OK? All right. I didn't know it, but Joe was standing just outside the doorway while I was yelling at Kendall. What happened? I have no idea. I realized at that point that I didn't know how to talk to my kids without yelling. After Kendall hit Marin in the face with a ball, Dad completely lost it with Kendall. I don't like this smart-ass attitude. So I gave him an example of how he should have spoke to her. You're going to stand right here. I really need to talk to you right now. At first, I was like, oh, great, Joe's going to talk to me now. I'm really not happy with the way that you just behaved downstairs. And I actually felt very angry as well by what you did. But then she was not yelling. She was talking really in a calm voice. When you do something like that, you've got to think about what that will do to somebody else. Because that kind of behavior hurts somebody else, right? When your dad's feeling angry with what he's seen, what do you think he could do that would help you feel that you could talk to him like you're talking to me right now? Like, if he doesn't yell at me that much and he talks to me normal. Right. You mean like you and I having a conversation now? Yeah, like that. He doesn't do that. He yells. And how does that make you feel? It makes me feel pretty sad. Like, he doesn't really like me, that he likes everybody else better because he usually talks to them and yells at me. I do think you owe somebody an apology, and who do you think that person may be? Mary. Yeah. All right. Let me see better, OK? Let me see better. He saw the difference straight away, and he realised that what was important was for him to have more self-discipline over his temper and to respond to situations that happen with the kids rather than to react and fly off the handle. But I still wanted to make one more point with Dad. If you open up, they'll open up. Otherwise, they're not going to come to you for anything. They're going to be worried about how you're going to react. Don't you, as a father, want to be able to connect with your girls on some level? I do. And you lay down a very important foundation for these girls because the first male role model in their life is you. And if their dad doesn't give them attention, and if their dad doesn't make them feel special, guess what? They'll look for someone who does. Oh, that's a fact. So what's the first step in fixing this? Not apologizing. You know Show your kid by example. Showing your emotions and your soft side is not a weakness. It's a strength. And you're about to learn that. OK. Dad knew what he needed to do now. But could he reconnect with Kendall? That was the question. Can you come talk to me for a bit? Please. You won't yell at me. I'm not going to yell at you. I was really wrong in the way I treated you. I'm sorry for getting mad. I know I yell way too much. You did make me really angry with the way that you treated Marin. And I was really disappointed. And you just kind of surprised me. But I'm sorry. You know I love you. Can I have a hug? After he said sorry for yelling at me, I felt pretty happy. I love you, honey. And I'm sorry for yelling at you. OK? OK. I thought I was a great dad. But listening to my daughter tell Joe that she was afraid of me 
no child should ever be afraid of their parents. I love you, okay? Dad has resolved issues with Kendall, but mum and dad still have a trust issue when it comes to dealing with their 13-year-old daughter, Kesley. So I took all three of them aside and asked Kesley to be honest about how she was feeling. Well, sometimes I feel like you guys don't trust me when I go out with friends to like, not just friends' houses, but like bigger places, like the mall and stuff, because at the mall, I've never been able to go off by myself. Okay, well, we can change that. If your homework's done and you've done your chores, we have no problem letting you go out to the mall with your friends. You're asking your parents to, like, trust you more. So what can you come to the table with so that they can hold you to a promise as well? Also decide an hour of my day of studying. Okay, that's good. That's a commitment. I'm willing to let you do these things. Don't blow it. What is it that you're fearful of? Just letting go. The fear comes from Kesley being robbed of what? Her virginity. Her innocence. You know, I... Kesley's there. Kesley. Hi. <laughs> We're willing to kind of cut the strings a little bit. And it's hard because I love you. Mom and I love you. It was very emotional seeing David open up to his daughter and opening his heart to her because I don't think he's ever done that. It made Kesley realize my dad really does care. We want what's best for you. Just... The boy thing is already here. Just... Dad just has to go buy a shotgun, all right? <laughs> it's tough to let go. She's my little girl. I love you, honey. Really, too. You don't ever want to have her in a situation that, you know, she's going to get hurt. But I just want her to know that I'm there. Let's make good decisions, OK? OK, so I'm gone for several days. Whilst I'm gone, I would like to know who's going to be doing chore buddies. All right. This family have certainly got some challenges whilst I'm gone for several days. There's no two ways about that. Mum and Dad, discipline. Follow through, follow through, follow through. The biggest struggle I think I'm going to have once joe has gone is the tantrums and the timeouts. But I know it's something I need to do. We'll see what happens. I'd like to see Kesley down at the movies with her friends, drop off, pick up, and having some fun, all right? I am a little nervous about not having her around, but it's a learning curve, and I'm, I'm here to learn. It's certainly going to be a challenge for Dad to keep himself on an even keel and to control that temper. Hello. Hi. Hi. I've been away for several days, and I am very curious to see how the Miller family have got on. We've certainly had some work to get through. So the first one we're going to look at here is Teen Trust. OK, Kesley, here's your money. <laughs> Enough money there to pay for the movies and get something to snack on. OK, I love you. You guys have a good time. Bye. How many times did you circle that car park? I know. <laughs> <laughs> I drove pretty slow out of there, I can tell you that oh, much. Oh, you must have. But you did it. I did. You did do it. And so what happened? It was great. When she got home, she came in my room and she sat Fabulous. there and talked with me Fabulous. on about her whole night and what happened. The fact that she come into your room, now that behaviour is so normal. Now if she goes out and she starts to go straight into her room, that's when you can switch on that little aware button and think, oh, I wonder if they think it's OK. So you can start to read your teenagers and understand, you know, that maybe something's slightly off. So we're going to move on to chore buddies. I need you to come in and start your chores. I can't actually do my chore right now, Dad, because Landon's eating. Why don't you pick up now while he's eating, and then he can vacuum, and then you can trade off and start your chores. What's 
happening here? Oh, Landon, just wanting to play with things and sisters were busy working. Exactly, and he knows. Don't worry, I'll just sit back a little bit. He's great at stalling the situation. Perhaps I'll get to sit down where all my sisters do all the work. God, I, I guess he's trying to find himself a girlfriend and a wife like that at the end of the day as well, right? OK, we need him as a 21st century man. What we can do is encourage Kendall to do her bit and say, leave the rest because Landon will have to do his share. Okay. And then you can say to Landon, look, if you're going to do this with your sister at the same time or you're going to end up having to do it 20 minutes later. Because at the moment, we've got him sitting on his hiney thinking that he's going to get away with doing it and his sister's going to pick up the pieces. Right. So we're going to move straight on to mum discipline here. Marin, look at me. Touch that one more time. This is your warning. I will put you to bed early tonight. She touched it. OK, that's it. You're going to go to bed early. You're going to bed when the babies go to bed at 7.30. Marin, look me in the face. I'm having it. Give me the rem remote right now. I'm playing. Right now. I'm playing. You are not. I'm playing. Look at me. I'm playing. Give me the remote right now. I'm playing. I'm playing. I'm not going to wrestle you, Marin. You're going to hand it to me. No, it's too, it's too late for that. OK, you let go of this right now. Marin, you're going to go to your room, or you're going to go to bed early every night this week. OK, every night this week. The discipline is still in a place where you're fighting mm -hmm. for that authority. When you actually started to fight for that computer piece that she was holding, you should have very clearly demanded for her to turn around and look. And when she refused to do that, you should have then told her that if she didn't look at you, you were going to turn the computer off. Okay. So you're taking control of the situation. You do not need to fight for a steering wheel. Right. Because this is what happens. You're so angry with her by this stage mm -hmm. that you've then given her an unrealistic discipline. You've said, you turn around, otherwise you're going to go to bed early every day this week yes. because I'm so mad with I you that I'm going to put That's you to like... bed every day. It's Monday when you said this. <laughs> She'd be lucky if that lasts till Wednesday. And then basically, you've shown your child there and then right. that you didn't mean what you said. We need to concentrate more on our focus, definitely. Focus, big time focus. Okay. Let's take a look at Dad's tone. Get up, eat your lunch. I don't like hot dogs. Let go of her hot dog. Are you are you three years old? No. Then stop it. Do not throw food at the table. Dad! What did you just do with your body? Identifying when you're losing it. What did you just do? Put my head down in my hands. Your body language speaks absolute volumes. I'm angry because this is happening, and you know what? That's happening. I'm angry. And when you see that, you then go, oh, I need, I need to check myself here. If you're aware of it... You can change it. You can change it. What was that? <laughs> Why would you do that? No, I told you, go up to your room. You're not you going to be down here. I did not. I wanted you to show me because you said you were done. You're not. Go back up to your room, finish it. That was rude. Don't ever just slam your books like that. That was kind of dumb. What? What? Wow. Sometimes you're losing it and sometimes you're holding it together. When you realize you need to vent it out, go out in the backyard and talk to yourself. <laughs> you make decisions. Am I going to behave like this or am I going to behave like that? Okay. And then come back in. It will help you with your tone. So, we're not done yet. We've still got work to do, as you know. I always work okay. together. So, let's get on and uh, carry on with our work. Thank you very much. Thanks. Thank you, Joe. Dad has made a lot of progress, keeping that temper under control. However, would he be able to promise his family that he could do so after I'm gone? How can something so small be so intimidating? <laughs> I'll leave you up here. All right. I realized there's a lot of things I want to tell my family. And there were a lot of things that I probably wish I would have said a long time ago. We're all gathered here today as a family because Dad has done something very special. He gave you all a message. All right, are we all ready? I'm so glad for this opportunity to see me as you see me. And I can tell you that I haven't been very happy with the things that I've seen. I guess the biggest question 
You know, it's what kind of dad do I want to be? All too often, I'm very quick to jump to conclusions or to allow myself to become angry. And I'm sorry. I love you, each of you. Kesley, how mature and responsible you are. And Kendall, I'm very proud of you. And I'm sorry for butting heads with you all the time. Marin, you're my little teddy bear. Landon, I hope that I will have done a good enough job that you will likewise be a good father to your own children. And to my little ones, Ainsley and Avery, you are two of the very best little girls in the whole world. And I'm so proud of how you are growing up. And I would like to tell my wife, I only hope that one day soon I can become that husband that you have always deserved. I love you all. Any thoughts on what Dad's had to say? Anybody want to comment anything? Yes, so in my head. I remember how I walked. My dad gave a really, really, yes. really good speech. <laughs> That's about to cry during the video. Did you need to hear what he said? Yeah. It was quite an emotional moment for the whole family, but it was something I think we really needed to see, that he really does care. I think he did an absolutely fantastic job. These kids learnt today, through example, how they too can express their feelings and be okay with whatever emotion they're feeling because their dad did that today. You know, I've got to take my hat off to him. Jojo's going now. This is just a little bit of love. Oh, so. <laughs> excellent, look at this. I can now interact with my kids without having this authoritarian dictator-like rule over them. Bye, Chrissy. The best thing with having Jo is that she's been able to help our family with our problems. It's really nice. Wow, thank, thank you so much. It's been such a great experience, and it's given me that hope that um, my kids are going to listen to me, and I'm going to be able to get through my days and go to bed without all of these overwhelming feelings. Jo has been a major blessing to our family. Come on, everybody. A big hug. This family, they have done all the hard work and the preparation to maintain the change that's happened over the last two weeks. And for that, I wish them the best of luck.